Welcome to Film Riot. I have my headphones on, which means this is another audio episode. Today, we're looking at cutting music to your film, but specifically looking at some of the packs that we sell on our store. But you can use these techniques using any of the music that you get. The idea being with your film, if you don't have a composer and you go out and you get licensed music, royalty-free music, and you are trying to add that into your film or just cutting in temp music, it's all the same thing. So I just wanted to go over some some of my techniques and ideas for mixing these things together and more importantly looking at how we do these packs because these packs are something that I wanted years ago and it's why we do them this way. So if we come into Adobe Premiere here you can see that we have my pack. These are two tracks that I composed and they're an extension of another pack that I have on there. Uh, this one we're selling right now for $7.50 which is crazy cheap because we have the sale going on right now but what's cool about them is if you open the pack, you have the main mixed version of the song, which is a mixed and mastered drag and drop ready version of the song that you can cut up and mix in to your piece that way. But then we have the stems here, which we can scroll open and you can see all these different layers of audio, which of course, these aren't all of the stems for the track. These are clusters of stems. So it's all the high strings, all the low strings, the wind section, the horn section. Uh, so it's the sections. It's not every instrument broken out. But if we come in here, you can see that they're all those broken out sections of the actual song. And that's going to let you customize to your scene a lot better. So now we're going to take uh, these two tracks. I grabbed scenes from uh, my other short films, and we're going to try to fit these to the scene. I haven't done this yet, so we'll see how it goes. So we'll take a look at this scene first from Ballistic, where the action really kicks off. And we'll kick this off right after the explosion. We'll have the music start, which I think this one would actually work pretty well, which with how these work, the best thing to do is to really bring in all of them and line them up and then uh, trim from there. That way everything's in time with each other so you can edit more easily without continually having to figure out how things are going to be in tempo. And then you can sort of tweak it from there. So now that I have everything in here, I'll probably just go ahead and link everything that way they all move as a group, so it'll stay in time with each other, but I can still tweak each one individually. So if I hold Alt and grab one layer, I can just move one layer around. So that will help us out a lot, but I'm gonna solo the drums, which is on this track here, which I think we could probably just kick into the action right on that part. I think that that's gonna work out for us. And I'm gonna make a cut here so I can easily just line it up. This is just a lazy, a lazy way to do it. I think right when it cuts in, we'll kick the music into gear. So I'm just gonna pull that back just so I could line it up easily. And that actually, that rise actually works here. So let's pull all that out. So I wanted to drop out there when she shoots him. So let's find a section where the drums will mute everything again, and we'll find a section where the drums drops out. Okay, that works. What about this one? I like that a little bit better. So I'm gonna hold Alt and cut it there, and then grab it, hold Alt, and then I'm gonna drag it, and that's gonna copy that. So I'm leaving the original still in place, and I'm grabbing this by itself, which is a copied version that I can bring over here now. And then we'll go to the point to where we want it to stop. Maybe we stop right when he hits, like around when he hits the ground. So again, I'm gonna grab my blade tool, hold Alt, cut it, hold Alt again, move that, and then we'll bring it back around or over here. But where do we want it to kick back in? So actually let's pull that back out. And then I'm gonna have it kick back in when he shoots the window, which is right there. So now, just for the drums we have. Okay, so I'm gonna to wanna to move everything closer again for sure. But let's see, let's just worry about this little section. So we have the little bit of section of action and then it drops out and then we're gonna bring the action back in. So let's worry about this first section here of what we're gonna do musically for all of it. And just out of curiosity, let's just put everything in and see how this works for the scene. I 
don't like the strings for this. It doesn't match. But I do like that little moment there. So what I'll do is I'll open the strings and I'll hold control click to create a keyframe. Click again to create another one and then just fade that in. Yeah, I like that a lot better. And then I wonder if we have our other track here. I wonder if we have something that would work. That might help us here. So let's let's just grab this little section. We'll bring that in. And that feels like it needs to go out there. So now we can find something else that will drop us out of that little section and bring us into our next section. And that's kind of how I think of it as a whole. Everything is it's a little section that needs a transition into the next section. So we have this opening section before the action kicks off then the first bit of action, then we drop out and then we come into another bit of action. So thinking about it in those terms will really help you build out the scene, keeping everything feeling like it has that forward momentum throughout the entire piece. Let's look through what we have here, maybe something with the horn that's a cool little accent that we could probably add in so let's toss that in there see where it could maybe go maybe right there it's sort of uh signifying what she's doing with the with the puck turn it down a little bit And it feels a little too abrupt. So what I think I'll do is I will nest this. And then in here, I'll drag this out. Make sure I fade it out completely there. And then I'll come back to my film, drag that out. And now I'm going to add a reverb to it. And see, so the reverb really glued that into the scene a lot more. It didn't feel like this weird extra bit just tacked on. So now we have something that's also interacting with our scene. So that makes it all feel even more cohesive and make it feel more customized toward your scene. So doing little things like that, finding little pieces within all these sections, all these layers can really help the whole thing feel very custom. And I, f I still feel like we need more of a build there. So let's again go see what we have. We have some risers in here. That's great. I think that one will work really well. So I'll grab that, bring that in. And that looks like a nice length for what we need. I'm, I, I want the riser to end right when she shoots because that sound design is going to come in and you're going to have a nice rise to the quiet and then the sound design will take over, which will be really cool. And you know what else I want to do? I'm going to drop out all the sound right when it explodes and I kind of want to boom. So if we go into, again, into our stems and we go to our drums, yeah, that'll work. So we'll bring that in, and again, we're going to nest this, open it up, and then we are going to create a keyframe right at the end because that's where we want it to stop. And then we're going to drag that down so our sound stops before that uh, snare hit or rim hit. And we're going to go back to our project, and we're going to drag that out, and again, we're going to add a reverb. So that's going to explode, and then I want the boom right in there. Okay, so we're gonna need to do a couple of things here. We're gonna refine our reverb in just a second, but first we need to add an EQ. And I'm just gonna use a built-in EQ so it doesn't look like I'm just adding all these plugins that you have to buy. You can use all the stuff that comes with your editor for all of the stuff I'm showing here. So we'll just toss on a parametric equalizer, go into the parameters, and we're going to take everything off and add in a low pass and then bring that all the way down so we get rid of all the high frequencies and end up with just the boomy noise. And that's perfect for what I'm thinking. 
Maybe we will start it right here just for the sound. Sound design would come into play for exactly where I would put all of these things, but since we don't have that in right now, we'll just move that a little bit further and I'm gonna turn up the depth a little bit on this one, which is just the size of the reverb that happens after the sound essentially. Okay, so that's working, but then we're slamming into the stuff a little too out of nowhere. So let's see what we can do to build that in. And I think the drums might do that for us if we just pull the drums out. Let's find out. Yep, and I liked what the horns were doing for that quick moment there as well. So I'll pull the horns out, zoom in just a smidge, open that up, and then again, keyframe it to bring us in. So again, we're not just slamming into music that feels like it's being thrown in. We're massaging it in there, making everything feel glued together so it feels like the piece that belongs to this film. Then I'm gonna move uh, all of this down to match where the drums come in, which is too late. We're gonna have to tweak that, but I want it to ramp up. So let's find a different portion of the song for that bit. I think that works. So we'll drag everything to that moment and then bring all that over, find where we want it to kick in, which we decided we wanted it to kick in right at the, the bullet hits. So I want that end piece to be where it explodes. So let's figure out how we can make that happen. Let's go to a drum hit and see if we could just bring everything over. Oh, a little too far. Yeah, that, that's, around, that's around where I'm wanting it to happen. I think kicking back in where those guys start running. That actually works. I don't like the horns there though. We're gonna take those out. So now we've taken everything and chopped it up to match our scene and we've done it very quickly. We could spend a lot more time and smooth out some of the rough patches to really make everything feel fluid. But now with that and the production sound back in, we have this. So you could see how you could take a pack like this and because it's layered out, you can get in there and really customize it to your scene. So if you get our packs, don't think that you have to work it to the way that the song actually goes over time or even with a track that you're using. A great way to find cut points is through percussion. You find those percussive hits and you connect those together to find ways in and out of those sections that we talked about, thinking of it in terms of sections to really help you drive your scene and drive the music in your scene for it to feel organic and push everything forward and not feel like little pieces just dropped in. And of course, as you can see, we're peaking like crazy. I really need to get in and mix this properly to make sure everything is sitting together well in the mix and not just <laughs> peaking all over the place. But again, you see in a very short amount of time with tools like these, what you can do. Uh, if you do want these packs, link in the notes below, especially to uh, the tracks that I showed here today. And they are on sale because we do have that Christmas sale going on right now, but don't think that you need our packs to be able to do this. It's all about the techniques that are being used to take a song that wasn't meant for your piece and mold it into something that is now meant for your film.
Domain.com has all your website needs, including .com and .net domain names and intuitive website builders to help you start creating your identity and sharing it with the world. And of course, they're affordable, reliable, and have all the tools you need to start building your website. And no domain extension is going to help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. And if you want to brand yourself online, Domain.com has over 300 domain name extensions to fit your needs from .club to .space. And as always, they're showing you love by giving you 15% off their already affordable prices when you get domain names, web hosting, and email. Just use that coupon code FILMRIOT at at domain.com's checkout. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my suggestion of the week. And that is Mission Impossible Fallout. It is now out to be purchased. And the film itself is amazing and a masterclass in tension and action. One of the best that I've personally ever, in my opinion, that I've ever seen. But what I'm really suggesting is a special features. It's over an hour of behind the scenes special features, all really, really great and insightful stuff if you're looking for it. But there's a lot that you can pull from it. And there's three different commentaries. There's the director commentary, director commentary with Tom Cruise, the producer and star, of course, and a commentary with the composer as well. So definitely check that out. Lots of really great stuff there. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.